Hey folks, we uh, are doing something a little different today and it's going to sound insane. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, you're going to want to stick around all the way to the end of the video because if you do, you're not going to regret it. But um, we're, we're, the, at this channel, we've done a number of crazy things. I'm Nathaniel Rumble Jance. You're watching Nintendo Prime. We cover Nintendo news and all this crazy uh, stuff. We've had you know wild times on live streams. Sometimes uh, maybe maybe throwing back a few too adult, a few too many adult beverages. Uh, we've had squirrel masks on. We've done little voiceover things. We've had a great time. We've lit the world on fire. But one thing I've always uh, believed in is one giving back to the very community that helps support what we do here and then also when we can giving back to those in need um, because I, I truly believe that a difference is made with every little bit of effort thrown towards those in need so even if you only had 50 cents to say when you roll through McDonald's to give to the Ronald McDonald Foundation. Yeah, sure, you can argue it's not the greatest charity in the world, but a little bit of that money you gave is helping somebody in need somewhere. Now, this video is really crazy uh, because I'm only really looking to get 100,000 views, but here's the thing. Every 100,000 views, we're going to give away a Switch OLED. Literally, you see this thing back here? Every 100,000 views this video gets, we're going to give away a Switch OLED, but it's not just that. So that's all cool and everything, but what else are we going to do for the charity? That's how I give that to you guys. What do we do for charity? Well, here's what's also going to happen. For every 100,000 views, we're going to give $50 to a charity. Now, I haven't decided which charity yet. I'm actually sifting through a number of them right now because I got to make sure it goes to a cause and a charity that isn't just, you know, CEOs profiting on the back end with only 10% of the money donated going to a good cause. There are some well-known ones out there uh, specifically for video game MERS uh, to donate to, but I got to, you know, kind of consult with a larger audience and maybe you guys have some charity suggestions of your own uh, that you could put down in the description. Uh, but here's the thing, I could obviously get in trouble for a video like this. I'm a small time YouTuber. I do have a job. I am a full time college student. But here's the thing, obviously when I say for every 100,000 views, we give away a Switch OLED, that can be a bit troubling because you don't necessarily make enough money to pay for a Switch OLED with 100,000 views. You don't necessarily make enough money to do that and give money to charity, right? It, it just doesn't happen. I think the last video I had uh, get over 100,000 views, it was like 115,000. And um, yeah, it only made like $140. So I, I can't be too wild about this. So what I will say is the $50 donated to the charity, that's going to be forever. So every time this video gets 100,000 views till the end of my days on this planet, um, I will donate $50 to charity. That much I can guarantee you. But we have to put a limit on the, on the OLEDs. I, I can't be crazy here. So while we're not going to say, oh, if it gets a million or two million, we're cutting you off. What I will say is there will be a cutoff date so we could obviously do the giveaway. So here's what's going to happen. For every 100,000 views this video gets from now until Christmas Day of 2021, that's right, December 25th, for every 100,000 views from now until then, I will give away a Switch OLED. And I still could get in trouble for this. It still could end up being millions of views, and I'm stuck, you know, shelling out hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Switch OLEDs. But that's for me to worry about. I will make it happen. I will make sure that we get those Switch OLEDs out to all of you. Um, it, it's really interesting, too, because while we're obviously driving um, some viewership here uh, to try to do something special for charity and obviously give back to you guys, um, I mean, I'd be remiss if I mentioned, you know, you're not going to win one of those Switch OLEDs if you're not subscribed. Um, yeah, I, I think it's the least I can ask you to do, uh, considering what I'm trying to do for you guys and for charity. In fact, you know, if you're actually watching this in the month of September, uh, we actually technically have a Switch OLED giveaway going on right now that you need to be subscribed for to enter. So, hey, you already get entered for one before we've even hit our very first view on this video while I'm still editing. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited about all of that, and I'm really excited about what I'm about to announce at the end of this video. But before we do, I guess now is where I give you a little background about who I am and you know why I'm a YouTuber because I am a man in his mid 30s. Uh, I've been a Nintendo fan 
man, since as far back as I can even remember, maybe not back to my very first time crawling, uh, but when I picked up Punch-Out uh, and played it on my dad's uh, Nintendo Entertainment System when I was like five years old. Um, I was born in 1986, and it was a wild time with Mike Tyson's Punch-Out because my dad was actually on Mike Tyson and going to the bathroom, and I thought the game looked fun, and I wasted it and he had to start all over again. Basically, Mike Tyson destroyed me. I had no idea what I was doing, and my dad was not very happy since it was the very first time he had ever made it to Mike Tyson at the end of that game. If you've ever played Mike Tyson's Punch-Out or even the original Punch-Out, you know how hard it is to beat that last fighter, let alone Mike Tyson, who, for my money, was probably the most difficult of all the fighters throughout the various Punch-Out games. So, yeah, that was my first experience with video games, and it kind of just snowballed from there. I eventually got an original Game Boy, and then uh, later a light and a Game Boy Color, so I played a lot of handheld games, got really into Pokemon for a while, uh, really into Super Mario Land. Uh, there was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game I remember fondly playing on my Game Boy. And obviously I was playing a little bit of Nintendo Entertainment System along the way, and then eventually a Super Nintendo. But my dad was always buying the consoles for himself, and I was the kid getting the handhelds. It was, it was a very interesting time. It really wasn't until the N64 that it started to become the family system, and I got to really dive deep into console gaming. But by then, my dad was also very, very nice to me, because he was really into computers, uh, while working at Domino's Pizza. That's right, he was like a supervisor or whatever, you know, managing like four different stores. And he helped me build my very first computer. And here I thought I was building it um, something for his work or whatever, because, you know, they use computers. I've been to his office building uh, where they manage a bunch of stuff behind the scenes at Domino's. And I just thought it was just, you know, a fun father son thing to do. And here, lo and below, it was a birthday present. Um, and I built my own first computer. And it was so cool because back then, obviously, the internet was so young. There was dial up and all that. And yeah, it was cheap, but it wasn't great. And I was busy playing Age of Empires online through MSN Gaming Zone. Like, Anyone, anyone out there remember MSN Gaming Zone? No, like that, that that's a, a thing that's only in, from my childhood, right? Like, oh boy, you guys remember like AIM, you know, AOL Instant Messenger. I mean, back in those days, MSN Messenger, Yahoo, uh, Yahoo Chat Rooms, that was like a big thing. Remember ASL? Anyone out there remember ASL? Like that was my early, you know, interactions with people in video games. Um, and it was just truly a special time, at least for me growing up. And I just continued to love Nintendo systems along the way. I did eventually dive into PlayStation and Xbox and, you know, really enjoy the wide breadth of video games that are out there. And even to this day, like, it's kind of funny. My children right now are playing a game. They're in the other room playing, you know, Roblox. Who, who, who knew when that game came out, you know, God, however many years ago that my you know, six-year-old and eight-year-old son would be in the other room playing Roblox. And yeah, they also play Switch and all that. Um, and my son actually, uh, my eight-year-old really likes PlayStation 5 a lot. I uh, but he likes like the games that are obviously intended to be played by someone his age, like New Super Lucky's Tale, which I told him he could play on his Switch, but for some reason he just has to have it on PlayStation 5. Or you know, something else that's crazy. Um, I, well, I guess Astrobot isn't so crazy. He also really enjoyed uh, Sackboy. So there's a, just a lot of gaming and love in this household, and um, it continues to this day as I instill uh, that in my children. And I I get it. Some people are going to be like, but your, your, your kids, what are they playing Roblox on? Yeah, they're playing them on tablets. I understand, okay? There's always that conundrum between is it real gaming? And the thing is, the tablets and phones and all that of today are basically the Game Boys of yesterday. I understand that gaming has changed a bit, but think about some of the popular games on phones. When you think about things like... I mean, God, is this even so popular like Candy Crush? <laughs> um, what, it's a puzzle game. I mean, hello, Tetris on Game Boy. I'm not saying it's better than Tetris, but I am pointing out that it's, it's a very similar experience. And touch controls are just really easy for young kids to understand over buttons and sticks. And I know it sounds crazy, someone who grew up with a D-pad and then like the Atari stick back when I got to try that and then like the Genesis with the six buttons and how weird the six buttons felt. But it still was so cool because I'm playing the Sega Genesis, rocking Sonic 2, and you know, I'm playing Ramparts. Anyone else out there play Ramparts? Like, it was really cool for me. And I'm trying to understand that, hey, this is kind of cool for them too. Yeah, they are experienced in other parts of gaming. But, hey, tablets and phones are part of the gaming world today. In fact, they're maybe the largest audience of the gaming world. So it's insane thinking how gaming's evolved over the years as I've gone older. Now, obviously, as I grew up, I eventually became doing this thing on YouTube. But I didn't really start doing that until 2017. Now, if you look up how old this channel is, it'll say 2008. But you'll notice in those earlier videos, a lot of, th a lot of something called Zelda Informer. 
Yeah, when I was 12 years old, I started a Zelda fan site on geocities.com called Zelda Domain. Um, and I wrote like walkthroughs and guides. I really got into the Legend of Zelda back then, right after Ocarina of Time came out. And like so many kids did. And I, I just had a lovely time growing that site, growing that site. And I basically ran Zelda Domain in various forms uh, and got better and better at web design and web programming all the way about till 2006 uh, when my host at the time just shut down. Um, it shut down and all the sites on the network went down with it. And, you know, at this point, I had just graduated high school in 2005. And I, you know, I, I was in college and I really wasn't thinking about what the hell I'm going to do next because it costs a lot of money to run a website, keep servers up and all that. Um, you can talk about, oh, it's only 15 bucks a day, but when you're in college, uh, you know, and you're 19, and that 15 bucks is the difference between whether you have ramen noodles to eat or not. Uh, it, it's kind of a interesting conundrum you find yourself in. So uh, me and a buddy were working on another Zelda site behind the scenes called Absolute Zelda. We did pay for a year of the domain and we had some really cheap $2 a month hosting, but we weren't you know, we, we were just preparing to launch that, um, and it took us about a year of development, and it was a really cool, even by today's standards, it was a really cool dynamic layout. It was going to work awesome um, on what was at the time. We, we didn't even know that, that you know, smartphones were even going to be a thing yet. The iPhone, the very first iPhone just came out, so we were just trying to make it dynamic for all devices. And um, lo and behold, the people who are running Zelda Informer, which was founded in 2007, uh, approached me and asked if I would, you know, come on and, and run the place because uh, I had all this experience running fan sites. And they had a bunch of people who are really good writers, but not necessarily anyone who's really good at managing all of that. So I joined uh, eventually in 2008 on Zelda Informer. And from that point forward, that website went from a small little fan project with a couple hundred views a day to getting millions of views per month by the time I ended up leaving. Um, through some means that I didn't want to happen, but I ended up I ended up being uh, let go by a new ownership uh, back in 2017, which is when this channel really got started. This channel was originally a YouTube channel for that website, but we didn't really upload a lot of content, and I negotiated on my way out to maintain this channel because I had basically been the face of it since 2008 when we put together this YouTube channel. So. Uh, yeah, from there, my YouTube journey kind of began, and it was really the community that pushed me to do more. I was just putting up videos occasionally, still had, you know, still had jobs in co well, college, I really wasn't in at the time, but I was raising my children, um, and, you know, I, I recently, last year, got back into college deciding, you know what, you know, I need to make, I, I need to set myself up better, I'm getting to my mid-30s, and, you know, I don't have anything in retirement. So it's just a, a whole crazy thing where it was, it was time to finally get my, get my crap together as my kids are getting older. I don't want them to feel like they got to take care of, uh, you know, mom and dad uh, when we're, you know, 70, 80 years old and have no money. And they got, and like, I don't want that to be the case. I want them to know that we are good. We are taken care of. Um, you don't have to financially support us, uh, even if our health goes south or something like that. So um, that's just something that I personally want to do. Plus, obviously... I want to be able to tell my children that they don't have to go in debt $100,000 to go to college. I'm doing that. I don't want them to have to do that. So that's why I'm back in college. But along the way, the community really pushed me to do more and more YouTube videos. They kept saying, hey, you're kind of fun. Hey, uh, you bring a zest as a, as, as a dad and a gamer and you have all this deep history with all these different franchises. I founded MetroidWiki.org for crying out loud. I have done a lot of things all around video games and I actually almost enjoy creating content about video games more than playing them now and it, it, it's crazy to me to say that but I still have this deep passion for video games but now I'm almost more passionate about creating content around it be it news be it impressions it's crazy to me how much gaming has really impacted me as a person uh, and gotten me through some tough times and now here I am making a video where the sky's really the limit on what ends up being given away from it um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm really thrilled to, I guess, to get towards the end of the video. For those of you that stuck around for all this story about me in the channel, um, I want to announce that, uh, this video in the month of September here, uh, and October, November and December. So for the next, you know, three months, even if we don't get to a hundred thousand views, this doesn't matter. We will be giving away a hundred dollars in Nintendo switch eShop codes. Um, 100 each month to one person who comments down below. It'll be randomly chosen. It's just going to be a randomizer that picks the name. Um, 
But what I want you guys to do in the comments is obviously you can talk about this video and all that, but I want you to just tell me your favorite gaming memories growing up. Maybe you are still a child yourself. Maybe you're a parent, an adult. Maybe you're a grandparent. I have no idea. Tell me your favorite experiences with video games growing up or what got you into gaming if you just got started. Um, that's something I'm always curious to know. I told you my story. Hopefully you guys have some really interesting ones I can read later. Uh, and we will literally on the 1st of October uh, pick a winner uh, and you know start start getting that hundred dollars given away but if you can't tell all of our winners got to be subscribers that's just kind of what you guys do for me because um i don't know i feel like that's the least we can do as a community together is just keep growing so if we ever do something like this again it can be bigger and better and we can help even more people and also help each other Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robodance from the Turner Prime. I actually usually don't wear glasses. My contacts are in order right now. Um, so I actually don't like wearing these things. Fun fact. But you know what? I'll catch you guys in the next video.